Welcome to all of you who are joining us by Zoom and to all who are watching this service afterward on our YouTube channel. Tonight we celebrate the Nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we do so in this little church that many of us have come to know God in, and yet God is not contained in this building. We gather here as people of God, in heart and in soul. And this Holy Eucharist is offered to the glory of God and in thanksgiving for the ongoing life of St. Martin's. A couple of announcements before we begin our liturgy tonight. One is that this service will be available by Oh, probably about nine o'clock tonight up on our YouTube channel. So if you have friends or relatives that are needing a little food for the soul, 
um, please do share the link with them and invite them in as well. Tomorrow on Christmas morning, the Christ Mass will be celebrated from my living room at home, and I warmly invite you to join me there for story and for, for food as well. And this coming Sunday, we have the pleasure of being able to witness our deanery lessons and carol service, so there'll be even more opportunities to sing. And in this service, we have included a number of familiar carols and you're welcome to sing along from wherever you are and to get your Christmas music. So let us begin. The parish of St. Martin's acknowledges that we live and we work and we worship on the ancestral and unceded land of the Coast Salish peoples. Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations. We pray that Christ's reconciling love will be reflected in our words and in our actions. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and the great commandment, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. 
O God, who makest us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of thine only Son, Jesus Christ, grant that as we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, we may with sure confidence behold him when he shall come again to be our judge, who livest and reignest with thee and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest. As people exult when dividing plunder, for the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. You have broken as on the day of Midian, for all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness for this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly pleasures, passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, 
upright and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that we might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own, who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel is written in the second chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the first verse. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them at the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. 
you will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying God and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I speak to you in the name of the one true and loving God, whom we name Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer of the world. Amen. In those days, they were lonely. Well, if you lived in a country occupied by an enemy, you couldn't move around freely. You were cut off from family and friends, and there are guards and checkpoints. Transportation is difficult, especially if you are poor. Work is segregated. Too many people can't get together and cause trouble that way. Even visiting a relative in a nearby town is a dangerous business. People tend to stay close to home unless they have a really urgent reason. But sometimes they have no choice. It sounds like what we've been living through this year, doesn't it? But it happened over 2,000 years ago. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered, and all went to their own towns. So Joseph, of the family and house of David, has to travel over a hundred kilometers south from Nazareth to Bethlehem, to the ancestral city of David. We don't know why Mary, his eight and a half months pregnant fiance, goes with him. Was it because of the census or because she couldn't bear to be parted from the one who would be her husband and stepfather to her child? Whatever the reason, the couple arrive in Bethlehem to find there is no relative there who will give them a bed and there's no room for them at the inn. They shelter in a stable where there's no family or friend present for that lonely, painful night when Jesus descends into the world. Two on the registration form become a tiny family of three, come together in love for each other. But I wonder, did Mary cry and long out for the security of her home and her mother and her life before she agreed to God's promise to change the world? as she wraps her baby in warm clothes and makes a safe bed for it in the feeding trough for the animals, is Joseph able to comfort her? Does he feel the solitude of his responsibility? These two dear ones, does it weigh on his shoulders in the darkness? They're not the only people feeling lonely that night. Out in the fields are shepherds, keeping watch over their flock. You might imagine them huddled in a group around a campfire, but that's not really how it was. Each has his own responsibilities. Each has his own thoughts. Shepherding is a lonely and a lowly occupation. Although King David was a shepherd, he looked after his father's sheep before he became the ruler of Israel. That was a long time ago. 
Now they're regarded as little better than bandits, especially by the Romans. They have to move their animals from place to place to snatch grass before the soldiers snatch the sheep for their suppers. And they don't trust each other much either. It's competition to survive. Then comes an angelic messenger to surprise the shepherds and they're caught in the headlights of glory. There's no room to hide from the Romans or from God. But terror at being found turns to joy. The announcement is good news to an occupied people. To you is born this day in the city of David a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. One come to rescue them from their lot. And then an army comes, but it's a host of angels, not the Romans. And they sing of peace and goodwill among people, pointing to a way in the future when all can come together. It's up to the lonely shepherds to decide whether they're going to go to Bethlehem and see for themselves this child from God. And they find Jesus in a manger. And so can anyone who comes to look. This night, we are each drawn from our lonely places to this act of worship. And we're not the only lonely ones awake tonight. Across our land, across our world, we too are under the shadow of occupying forces. This year, humanity has endured war and oppression, disease, climate change, corruption, racism, and the many other faces that sin wears. And we have not valued the lowly ones among us who work to support, to labor to supply what we need. The healthcare workers tending the sick and the elderly tonight, the grocery store clerks, the long haul truckers away from home, farmers and factory workers, teachers and tutors. There are those who leave the safety of their homes tonight to care, and there are those who stay at home to keep others safer. It's all lonely work. And the night is dark. But the story of the angels and the shepherds and of Mary and Joseph point us toward the good news. Here is the manger. Here is the one in whom we all come together. Perhaps you knew that Bethlehem is the Hebrew for house of bread. And that manger is from the French manger, meaning to eat, because it's the place where the animals feed from. That first Christmas, lonely people gathered around a manger. They peeked in and they saw that the host was a baby boy, Jesus, the Son of God. And for over 2,000 years now, lonely people have gathered at another manger, at a table to eat. And together they've prayed and they've blessed and they've broken and they've shared bread in the name of Jesus. Again, on this nativity of our Lord, we celebrate with communion, knowing that we can't all eat it physically, but there's bread for our souls here. It reminds us of Christ among us. It keeps us coming together. I want you to know that nothing can separate you from the love of God tonight. Not COVID-19, not lockdowns, not travel restrictions, not the absence of loved ones through distance or death, not the fact that Christians are not able to pray and worship in church buildings because we've each found a way here in this moment. Jesus is among us. This is sacred space. Christmas, after all, isn't a place, and it isn't a day. Christmas is how we come together. Amen.
I invite you to join with me as we say, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Light of life, you came in flesh, born into human pain and joy, and gave us power to be your children. Grant us faith, O Christ, to see your presence among us, so that all of creation may sing new songs of gladness and walk in the way of peace. Nurturing God, remembering the exile of the Holy Family and Herod's slaughter of the children, we remember all who need our sustaining love. Hear our prayers for the church and the community of the world. As the shepherds had a vision of angels while they watched their sheep on the night of Jesus' birth, this year, let us marvel at the ingenuity of science, scientists and the daily striving of nurses and doctors as our hospitals reach capacity. God of glory, your splendor shines from a manger in Bethlehem, where the light of the world is humbly born into the darkness of human night. Open our eyes to Christ's presence in the shadows of our world, so that we, like him, may become beacons of your justice and defenders of all for whom there is no room. Amen. And now this Christmas Eve, let us remember before Almighty God, those parishioners and family members of parishioners who in 2020 departed this earthly life. Jim Box, Anne Gilmore Bryson, Ted Cook, Susan Dart, Kay Huddleston, David Liddell, Joan Millard, Irene Moore, Teresa Pallant, Christine Parks, Jill Royal, Mardi Schott, Don Smith, Mary Sprague, Cliff Yacoub, Mike Winkle, and Elvira Wilson. Rest eternally grant unto them, O Lord, and may light perpetual shine upon them. Amen.
Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, thou hast caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of thy glory in the face of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants, with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, to make before thee in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We most heartily thank thee, almighty and ever-living God, that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen.
Now may the peace which passeth all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you this Christmas and always. Amen. <laughs>